Please join me in the pledge to the allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the November 4th, 2019 Selectman's Meeting. We've had a um, non-public session at 6.30 this evening, and now we are going to have public hearing, RSA 35, colon 95. Did you want to join us at? Sure. You don't want to understand. Yeah. <laughs> Get in the chair so I'll have all my gear on. So, uh, folks, as you recall, I came to the board a while back about one of the horses we were going to be looking to ship out. Just wasn't working out, and we were fortunate through our relationship with the friends of the Mounted Patrol to come up with a new horse for the uh, Mounted Patrol. His uh, great name is Warrior Goliath. <laughs> we'll be shortening that up a little bit to Goliath. So, uh, he is already in our uh, in our barn uh, training. He's acclimating well. Uh, passed all the vet muster uh, down in Kentucky from the farm we got him at and has passed our muster. So looking forward, but we do need a vote of the board to accept the donation from the front of the mountain. Make a motion to accept. I'll second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank, Thank you, very you very much. much. Next, we have public hearing RSA <coughs> 31 colon 95 dash B. Um, under RSA 31-95-B to designate the unanticipated un funds in the sum of $116,293.33 from the state of New Hampshire to be utilized in the replacement of the sewer main on Elaine Street. That's correct, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Those funds are coming as part of the distribution of surplus in the state funds. And they're to be used in accordance with the provisions of 3195B, which is voted by the Board of Selectmen under statute. So do we go to the public? Yes. yes. Going to the public, do we have anyone that would like to comment? Seeing none, back to the board. Anyone wanting to comment? Mrs. Wolseley? No. Regina? I think this is a great use of the funds received by the state of New Hampshire. That's all I have. Jim? Same. No, it's great use of the funds. And so. I agree also. Do we need to you take a formal vote, yes, sir? Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, designate the unanticipated fun funds in the sum of 116293.33 in the state of New Hampshire be utilized to replace the sewer main on Elaine Street. A second. We have a I have first a and a question. second. Comment? Is this the only public hearing that's required? So. Yes. Okay. All those in favor, <coughs> unanimous. Next, we have public comment. Anyone wishing to make public comment this evening? Charlie, please join us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I'm going to uh, try to make this real quick. I, uh, I got a handout here that I'll pass out to you in a second, but. <clears throat> One issue in particular divided selectmen and townspeople, trash. At a special town meeting in October, a majority of the residents voted to set up a transfer station that would dispose of, dispose of trash through a user fee system called bag and tag. Some business people were outraged with the system because it was, would be extremely costly for them. Supporters said it would be a fair way for paying for trash. Free trash pickup was being funded through property taxes. However, only 10% of the tax base is commercial and industrial, and those businesses produce more than half the trash in town. This was written in 1993. Uh -huh. Here we are 26 years later. Okay? What, what I'm asking the board is to please, you know, don't, don't kick this down the road again. You know, the quickest way to draw up tipping fees is to ban the pickup of all commercial single-serve glass beverages. This would be beer, wine, soda, juice, coffee, milk, etc. I've had a couple of people say the town attorney said you couldn't do it. Well, I believe you can. I think with a stroke of three pens out of five, you can stop commercial trash. I'm not proposing that. I'm proposing that this, this board say we're not going to pick up single-serve glass beverages of any type at the beach. Okay. 
and you know, it could be the whole town, whatever, it's commercial. Let's get started. We need to get something, we need to get something done in all ways. Any more money to study something we are, should already know. Was the state park represented in this commission <coughs> committee? I don't know. How much do they produce? How much do they pay? Where do they stand on recycling? These issues can and should be addressed in our JOP with them. Hampton Beach businesses need to lead and not just expect trash to disappear at no charge. Businesses need to adopt extreme recycling to reduce town tipping fees. Personally, as a residential taxpayer, I'm tired of hearing how much businesses pay in taxes and they don't put children in schools or that this, or that this has been voted on before or will have vermin. How many times was the police station, the fire station, the school, or the rec fund voted on? Times change, and we're all in this together and have a responsibility to reduce our waste. DPW does a great job, and they'll do what this board wants. This isn't that difficult. The unsung hero in keeping Hampton Beach clean is simple. It was buying trash can containers with covers. Because in the past, we had trash all over the beach. It was yeah. caused by the wind and the seagulls, 90% of it. Yeah. Trash can covers were blown off down the street, driven over, you know, blown into the ocean. So the receptacles is really what was a, was a big thing to change a lot down the beach. I, um, I'm going to wrap this up. Another thing to consider, you know, I'd like you, any of you to take a look if you could spend five minutes. July 8th, 2019, saw the Waste Committee. I spoke five minutes at the very beginning of the meeting, yeah. and I told them when I spoke, I'm one and done, because I did everything this committee did 12, 13 years earlier, and I wasted my time, and here we are 26 years later, kicking it down the road. Junk mail. The average household, 41 pounds. Yeah. You know, we wrote letters asking people about how to, how to uh, pay, you know, ruin meals, how much they pay, and stuff like that. How about if we, you know, upstairs had letters all ready to go to get on the best no junk mails? If you take 41 pounds and multiply it times every household, there's a lot of weight. Mm. And they claim that, you know, not just the tipping fees, they say that's about a third. The transportation and pickup is two-thirds more. So you figure it out. There's some money to be saved here. How recycling is changing in 50 states. There's a website here, and I gave, I got the thing you can look it up. They have it state by state, all 50 states, what's happening. You know, I ask this board to please take some action. Don't kick it down. Let's get started. Thank you very, very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Anyone else wishing to speak to, under public comment this evening? <laughs> He's a tough guy to follow. Uh, Dave Hartnett, at Ocean Boulevard. Um, I just want to take a couple minutes of, of your time and thank you for putting the uh, Waste sir. Committee together. I think uh, you'll you. find tonight that uh, when uh, Assistant Manager Sullivan gives his report, you'll see there's a lot of work, uh, work into it. We had a really diverse uh, board of homeowners, condo owners, and business people, and Mr. Sullivan did a good job of keeping the board on track. Uh, a few things that I want to highlight before Mr. Solomon gives his, uh, his, his uh, uh, report. Uh, the first thing is, and I think we can all agree on, on this, on the board anyway, on the committee, is that this, this isn't going to be fixed with one or two more in articles. It's, uh, it's much more in-depth uh, for research. There are cutting technologies in other communities, Dover being one of them, that are utilizing things that Hampton needs to look and to implement. And I don't think we should shove it down the community's throat. I think we should put some research into it so that we can give an intelligent uh, reason for why we need to change. I think we need to look at the form, uh, look at the committee that we have and maybe bring back some form of the recycling committee. Um, uh, there are a lot of people that, that were on that committee that were on the recycling committee before, and I think uh, the committee could help the, the selectmen reshape the way that, with, uh, that we handle waste in the community. Um, as a committee as a whole, we're all thrilled with the DPW. We can't, uh, every consultant that we had come in and speak to us said one of the things they normally come in to discuss is this dissatisfaction with the Department of Public Works, and that's never was the case with anybody. So I think we can be pretty proud of the the, uh, the management at the DPW. 
Uh, one strong belief did come out of it, and we can agree to disagree on how we want to get there, but the one thing the whole committee, condo owners, homeowners, and business people want is a clean community and a clean be beach, and that's of everyone's paramount concern. Um, one thing that's a little confusing for a lot of people in town that if they don't look into it is how the funds are collected in town and for expenses at the DPW. I understand that there's a state mandate or state suggestion on how it's done, but when we are taking money in for expenses that the DPW is taking uh, responsibilities for, there should be an offset. And myself personally, being a business owner, I've written, I looked at the other day, I wrote almost $1,600 in checks, and not one of them was made out to the DPW, it was made out to the town of Hampton. And we always are worried about where in the transfer station out. That money should, if you, you guys see it in, in your, through your discussion, you should look at diverting that money to offset um, uh, the wear and tear at the transfer station. I mean, every business community that brings an air conditioner or mattress or rug or whatever writes a check off the way to that, I think that would be a good place to start to, to do it. Um, and then and f finally, uh, last but not least, uh, I, I hope you take the, uh, the town manager's report and really take a look at it and question them about it because to get 15 people to show up for I don't know how many nights it was, and he did a great job of corralling us. It was like herding kittens there a few <laughs> nights. But he did a fabulous job keeping us together and keep us on track. There's a lot of technology out there that hasn't been discussed ever here because, quite frankly, we became aware of it through bringing in these consultants. And I think one of the suggestions that the town manager has is that we have uh, one of these companies come in and, and tell us other directions we can go in. Uh, last, and it's really not a big part of his report because we can't mandate it, it's the first time in my lifetime of living in Hampton that the business community has actually entertained the idea of pay as you throw, separating the glass um, out of, out of uh, recycling as a and I'll, and I'll wrap this up, but uh, I own a hotel. I put out 12 to 15 barrels three days a week. Mm. And for a week there, I had them uh, separating the glass from everything else. And the glass weighed, two barrels of glass weighed as much as 10 barrels of yeah. trash. Yeah. <clears throat> so if, you, if uh, one of the suggestions we have <laughs> is if we keep the committee together, I think the business community would dispose of glass similar to what Charlie brought up. The beer distributors have actually talked to the business community. They would like to get out of the glass business on Hampton Beach. So if you have the beer distributors and the restaurants and the hotels willing to do it, I think it's something that we, we should look at. We don't need a warrant article. I think if you keep the committee together, I think you can see that it will get done. So that's what I have to say. Thank you for forming it. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Sullivan. Chief Sullivan. That was my father. I'm skipped. <laughs> <laughs> having uh, enough about trash. Thank you. Um, Name and address. Having been a member of this board, I know how difficult it is to put a warrant together every year. But I would ask the board of selectmen to try their best in 2020 to the warrant's going to be long. We know that it always mm -hmm. is. But try and keep the articles short to the point and a little bit of brevity. Uh, we don't need a whole story in every warrant article with two or three paragraphs. And I think you'll make a lot of happy voters and end up with a lot of ballots with, uh, uh, without so many blanks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Skip Sullivan, 12 Colonial Circle, by the way. Good for you. <laughs> Good evening, Mike. Uh, Mike Edgar, uh, 7 Ants Terrace. I just wanted to mention about the uh, rail trail and the agreement coming up tonight on the old business. I, uh, I'm really in favor of the town getting to some agreement. We, uh, we, we could use it for the recreation. I know that uh, I've walked down there without having it done. Other people have too. And sometimes it gets a little hairy with, the, with some of the drainage areas and stuff. And I know that will be fixed up. But for us to take it over after it's done and, and maintain it, I think, is, is a good deal for the town. It's a good deal for the people. 
a lot of people can't, uh, you know, they want to ride their bikes and stuff. Uh, if they want to go someplace where they want to be real safe, they got to throw it on a, a car, or, you know, on a rack or something and go someplace like some of the other rail trails in the, uh, in the area, uh, New Fields or wherever. And uh, right here, we can have it right here. People can just go over there, whether it's with a stroller or with a bike or what, you know, from different ways to get onto it uh, in town. And I think it would be a real benefit uh, to the town to be able to do that. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening. Good evening, Tom. Senator Sherman. Uh, Tom Sherman from Rye. I guess that makes me a foreigner. Um, <clears throat> but I represent the 11 <coughs> towns on the seacoast. And um, I also wanted to speak about the rail trail because I understand this is possibly the only time we have to talk about it. Uh, I've spoken here before in favor of it. In terms of the development of the entire seacoast, this is a critical component. In fact, you know, the, the dream is not too far distant future being able to connect Portland to Boston by rail trail. And looking at the economic benefit for the town, it's massive. If you look at what's happened with the WOW Trail elsewhere, uh, the trail in Derry, trails in New York, trails in Vermont. In Vermont alone along Lake Champlain, which is sort of a similar setup, bringing in a million to $2.5 million in net revenue over the course of five months of use. And that was 10 years ago. So you can only imagine where it's gone in that time. Um, so in, in terms of the investment, the, the town, is the, the rail trail has already been bought by the state using federal funds. <laughs> the development of it is being done by DOT. And then when it is developed, uh, the town will have some component of the responsibility for it. But in all the towns along the seacoast, one of the real benefits that I see is developing the Route 1 corridor in a meaningful way, um, whether it's Rye, Northampton, Greenland. Greenland actually has a very tiny part of this. But that corridor has been They've seen development in terms of large amounts of new businesses, increased businesses, and in the uh, Cape Cod rail trail, um, over 50% of the businesses cited the rail trail as the primary reason they were moving into that area. So when you look at towns that used to have a super vibrant core, um, you know, Hampton still has a pretty vibrant core, but Northampton, uh, Seabrook, Returning back to some of the, the original buildings, being able to rehab those buildings, being able to reuse them. In some areas, you see them rehabbing mills and other factory types areas for residential condo and also recreation. So I think it's a huge win, not just for Hampton, but for the entire seacoast. But um, this is something that I think uh, I would really like to see us move forward with as a seacoast project and I think it will benefit not just the town but also the entire seacoast. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being here this evening. You bet. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? <laughs> Seth McNally, 226 Exeter Road, Hampton. Um, just calling, uh, co coming here today to ask you again to support the rail trail agreement that's going to be in front of you. Um, the only changes to the plan that's in front of you is section four, which is inde indemnification language. So I just, I hope that any conversation that we have is only addressing, uh, you know, that indemnification that we're not relitigating, um, you know, the pros, cons, uh, reasons to do it, not to do it. I think we all supported it. We, we've gone through that last January and I, I hope that we can just concentrate on that portion of the language and I think it'd be a great asset to the town. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak this evening? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to announcements in the community calendar. Mrs. Walsley. No, I have nothing this evening. Regina? I have nothing either. And nothing. Also, no? thank you. Yeah. I'll just say, hey, looks like an exciting possibility of having snow this week, so we're <laughs> all moving <laughs> on. Um, Next, we have approval of minutes. I will so move that we approve the minutes of October 21, 2019, with a spelling correction on page three. Uh, polls, uh, 
where you vote are P-O-L-L-S. It's just on the left-hand side, Fred, just right up at the top. Okay. I'll yeah. second that. All those in favor? One abstention. One abstention. And by the way, we're a week behind with these minutes. Why do we not have the 1028 minutes? Next, we have the consent, consent agenda. Oh. There's one item on it, entertainment license and posted permit, L Street Tavern. Also move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have Stephen Falzone, trustees of the trust fund. Good evening. See, we got to you earlier tonight. Yes. <laughs> Hi, good evening. Um, stocks year-to-date have had a pretty decent year. Bonds have done well. As bonds have done well, as rates continue to move lower, as the yield curve shifts lower. Fed moves and negative rates in Europe, definitely positive for the markets. Inflation appears to be under control. Uh, the real estate trust fund continues to grow and continues to throw off de decent income to the town, which is uh, good for the town. Uh, Q3 income to the town was $236,414. Year to date, the town has drawn $694,901 from the real estate trust fund. And projected income off of the reports we received today uh, should be plus $900,000 this year, so that's really, nice. really good. Uh, the transition from National Advisors Trust to Fidelity has gone well. I had a quick conversation with Dave Mays, and everything seems to be good there. And that is it. Any questions? Mrs. Wills? No. We, we are so fortunate to have the trustees of yeah, the trust yeah. funds. Thank you David, very much for what David Mays and his group does a really good job. He's Excellent. He, he's willing to work with the trustees and sort of, you know, tailor the funds to Great job. what's best for the town. Yeah, I second the same thing. Excellent job. Thank you for the report. Thank you. Steve, what, what is the real estate fund at right now, the trust? Twenty-two million... <laughs> Twenty-two million, four, ninety-one, nine, thirty-four. Wow. And there are not many other towns. Yeah, sir. No, it's... It, it's amazing. When I talk to people from other towns in New Hampshire and talk to them about the trust fund, just as a, a friend or if, if I meet them, they're blown away that it throws off this much income to the town every year. It's, it's a really, really good thing for the and, town. And a lot of people, just for information, a lot of people might not understand what the, how the trust fund came to be. Yeah, definitely. Could you just give a... Sure, I guess 83 or 84, the Hampton Beach Improvement committee or association used to have all the land at the beach under 99 year leases and they uh, they came due people that had homes and businesses on the land bought them there is still about 230 or 40 thousand dollars I think worth of land that still can come for sale and uh, the money got put into a trust fund it got managed it got mismanaged <laughs> and now it seems to be managed really well again it's yeah. just a wonderful thing to have this income for the town every every year thank you thank you no you're right I mean it's something that very few towns oh, yeah, have it's, the uh, it's incredible it really the ability is. to have some people back years and years and long before a lot of us yeah yeah thought about developing the beach and then yeah. uh, it's worked the way it is and it's continue to work great for the town. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much Thanks. for all that you do. We thank appreciate you. it. Next we have Jamie Sullivan. Can you do Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen? Um, I'm here representing the uh, committee you appointed, the uh, Trash and Recycling Committee. We struggle with our name many times. Um, several of the members are in the audience today uh, and You've all received the report. The report mm -hmm. will be up online yep. for the public to view. Yep. I can go over the, however you like to do it, I can go in strict detail or go through the very specifics. How would you like to proceed, Mr. Chairman? Um, oh, what do you suggest? I think why don't I give you the broad strokes and then we get into discussion. Of okay. So the committee that was appointed by this board in order to come in and look at how the challenges that the town was facing with regard to you know, the recycling market changes as well as the amount of trash that our public works department is uh, uh, responsible for picking up and the challenges financially that that's putting on us. So we looked at ways to try and uh, come back to this board and make recommendations of how to approach that potentially to offset some of that revenue. 
uh, pardon me, create revenue, offset some of those costs, and we did that. We went through and, and met, <coughs> pardon me, approximately twice a month, um, and we had subject matter experts come in, we had citizens come in and speak to us, um, and the committee had robust discussions about all of these issues. Um, we want to take a moment and thank all of those committee members who volunteered their time on behalf of the town and this board for their time. Um, it was a, a great group of folks with, as uh, Mr. Hartnett said earlier, um, it was a diverse group of people that came in. And we, rep, you know, folks from the business community, condos, residents, it was a great group of folks with uh, differing perspectives. We looked at one of the big issues you struggled with when this initially began was the condominiums. And essentially, to, to come to a, a resolution on that, the committee decided essentially to follow the policy that this board has had in effect since 2016, essentially as a fairness discussion. If you've been receiving trash pickup for 20 years, it didn't seem like a fair thing to the committee to, to cancel that at this point in time to continue and do so. Your policy generally sets uh, units that are above five units, new condos or condos that are developed. They won't get it in the future, consistent with their uh, requirements from the planning process. But basically, those that have been receiving it for an extended period of time will continue to do so. We looked at the commercial trash pickup um, as ways to reduce the load. Um, as we all know, the commercial businesses, especially at the beach, um, create, based on our tourist area, create a challenge and a substantial uh, cost to our department to go in and pick all of those materials up. Um, those routes can be three days a week or during the summer up to seven days a week for many of those businesses down there. So we had a long discussion about that and, and for a long period of time the discussion seemed to be some sort of a modified page to throw for that business community. This board had struggled with that or discussed that at a previous time as well. We seem to be making progress, got bogged down on um, what those costs should be, um, what those numbers should be for the page you throw or the modified version of that potentially there. In the end, uh, the committee felt that they didn't have enough data at the time to make an intelligent decision um, and decided to make a recommendation that we put that on hold for now and need further study on that um, for the board. Uh, there are other things that the commercial uh, briefly was touched on earlier in public comment. How do we reduce, and one of the things that we found with the subject matter experts coming in, we thought were really good examples of opportunities for us to reduce. We've had the discussion about glass. Um, there are some very interesting discussions that are going on in cooperation with the business community to come forward. You heard Mr. Hartnett speak earlier about um, the potential to slow down the amount of glass that's used in our beach area, switch to aluminum cans. As we all know, bottles are very heavy. That's a weight issue. We pay by the ton. If we can reduce our weight, we can reduce our costs. So that's a discussion that we, we believe needs to continue to happen um, and that we think that there's going to be good progress on. Other things we saw, uh, composting. Uh, one company came in and talked to us about composting. Um, the experts told us that approximately 30, upwards of 30 or higher percent of the weight that is in our total trash stream is compostable materials, food. Um, you know, those pizza boxes we always struggle with. Do they go in recycled or do they go in the trash? Well, those are compostable materials, as are some of the, you know, special plastics that are out there, are compostable plastics and straws and such you see many businesses switching to. So there's a real opportunity there to try and encourage, especially in our business community, to go into a com compost type of a circumstance where we divert out of our waste stream these items and move them to a compost. There are private companies that do that. They do a curbside. Um, this company that came in talked about another touristy type of place. One of their biggest users is a clam shack up in Maine, and the amount of diverted compostable material they have there is really phenomenal. So there's a great opportunity. We think more exploration has to happen in that area. There's a company that does it in this area called Mr. Fox, and they're ready to do it now. Um, I know personally in my house we've had that conversation of, you know, it's something to look at. And you can, each of us now individually can, um, compost. We can have this company come. They pick it up much like we do when you you uh, organize or, or bring them on. You become a customer. There's a fee structure based on the amount you do. But basically, you can have a small thing in your house that when you cook, you throw the scraps, the food scraps, or compostable material. You dump it into a larger container that either twice a week, uh, pardon me, twice a month, or more frequent if you choose to. They come. You put it out in your trash just like we do now. They pick it up and give you a new new line or new container. Um, it's very interesting. And again, the numbers are pretty significant. So we think there's an opportunity there. Um, 
other contaminations are working on reducing, as we all know, contamination of our, our uh, recycling has been a real issue for us. We have to continue to educate. We have to continue to work on that. And these other things all work hand in hand. Uh, as we listen to you know, the diversion of weighted materials, composting glass, there's another interesting one called textiles. You know, the stuff we see now that go to the, if you get out of the transfer station, there's the donation bins and that type of stuff. Well, there's a lot of things apparently in textiles and there is a company that apparently will come to your curbside. You put it out just like you do your trash in some other container that they give you and they'll pick it up for free. Um, and that's not only clothes, shoes, you know, the torn teddy bear, things of that nature that they can reuse those textiles. Again, reducing weight. Um, the pay as you throw, as, as we discussed and came to the end, and I'll give you the high points of what our final recommendations are. Um, the pay as you throw is something that, whether it be the modified program we discussed or a wider program, we think is something worthy of discussion now. It is the committee's recommendation that the board authorize either by putting a warrant article on and asking the voters to do so or authorizing now to hire out of surplus funds from this year um, one of a type of a company that came to visit us that is a, an expert in this waste management. They're experts in developing a pay-as-you-throw program to fit your community, to look at what your goals are, all of the things that we were doing as a committee, but more data needs to be done, and these folks do it all over the country, um, to come in and tailor a program that can work for your community. In order for it to be successful, we hear, you know, I've seen some social media, as I'm sure all of you have gotten phone calls. There's some disinformation of what that would look like. We don't know what it would look like, whether it's a town-wide or even that modified pay as you throw. We in the committee talked about down the beach, something in between. Um, and I think we think that that's a, a, an appropriate thing for us to bring in one of these consultants to help us develop that. Because if it's too, if we find that it's appropriate for the community, it's beneficial cost-wise, What's important is to develop that program, message that appropriately, educate the public if it has any chance of success again. So those are you know, the big overviews. I'll go through the final recommendations. We make uh, seven of them. Committee recommends that the a solid waste recycling, basically a standing ongoing committee of much like the work we did. Education will be very, very important to the community to continue to reduce our contamination, work with the business community much like we discussed to make those ideas we talked about come to fruition. And also, if we choose to go down that path of hiring that consultant um, to work with those folks to collect the data necessary to analyze that and bring that to the board for the resolution of how we'll, we'll finally deal with that. Uh, so bringing together that, that standing committee, I think, is a very, very good idea. Times are different now than when we did it before. Um, there's much more opportunity. I, th I think folks are much more interested in understanding the impact on our environment that recycling has. I think there's opportunities there for us uh, to have that group continue. As we said, uh, hire a consultant to work with the committee and, and explore the pay-as-you-throw programs. Um, so there's discussions about the revenue streams. And we've had some discussions about the most appropriate way to deal with the struggles that Public Works is dealing with on the cost issues. We know this year, so there's a couple of Warren articles. One of this, this recommendation of, uh, there's two different types of funds that were discussed about potentially taking a revolving or a special revenue fund to allow, much as uh, Mr. Hyde mentioned before, we all pay the $10, $20, whatever it is to dump things at the dump or at the transfer station. They dispose of it, those monies go into the general fund and it comes out of their expense side of the ledger. An opportunity exists potentially to create funds where those much like our ambulance fund or the detail fund where those numbers can come in and be paid in and out fund basically for what it does. Mm -hmm. The key to that really is though that there's an ongoing revenue stream to come in and replenish them. Um, <clears throat> so more exploration of those, uh, but uh, funds of those nature. Support for DPW's uh, challenges. The, we need a DPW truck to replace the one as you recall last year that got additionally traded in, right? <coughs> we need another trash truck. Uh, we recommend strongly supporting that, putting a warrant article to support what is recommended by DPW to replace uh, one of their trucks. The amount of personnel at Public Works in order to handle this job is challenged tremendously. We are at the very edge of what we can do. The uh, Public Works Department talked about needing additional personnel. The committee has recommended that we support um, the board authorizing another full-time person. Obviously, we'll have to determine how that will be funded. 
whether it's a warrant article goes into a future budget or we have some other means to try and fund that position. Um, and then finally, <coughs> pardon me, the seventh recommendation, again, as we said before, is to maintain the, the, the board's current policy with respect to the um, condos and the pickups that we maintain if you've had that service for an extended period of time. We do so. We do recommend that that five condo be expanded to, you know, apartments and multi-unit buildings, commercial buildings. So if you put up a new apartment complex, it falls the same as condos. It's not separate. You know, we think an amendment in there makes some good sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's the overview of our seven recommendations in our in our deliberations. Be happy to answer any questions you folks have. <coughs> questions, Mrs. Wolseley? Yes, I have a few, I guess, uh, comments and uh, possibly questions. It is important to address the glass problem, and I quite agree with that. I'm glad to see some progress being made there. Uh, in the past 15, 20 years, we've really gone crazy on these multi-unit developments, the uh, 50 condo units and whatever. Uh, all of those should be required to have their own waste removal company taking care of the condo condominium um, trash, I don't think we should be involved at all in any of these multi-unit developments uh, as far as, as having public works remove the waste. Um, I still question whether the state of New Hampshire should be hiring a private hauler for Hampton Beach. Every other state park in the state of New Hampshire hires a private hauler to take away the waste from the state park. It's just an observation. I know I'm not going to get anywhere with it, but I wanted to mention it. Now, if I the, can just, I know yeah. you brought that up. I think it's very important we look at the global picture on that. Okay. I understand your position, yep. but I also, also understand what that saves us. So there is that collection. They pick it all up, bring it to our transfer station, then they pay us for that waste. So yes, you can argue that, that maybe there's some wear and tear in our machinery and that type of thing to do that, but they pay for that. What's just as important, I think, has been lost in some of the discussions when I hear you talk about this is mm -hmm. they also pick up our side of the roadway and mm -hmm. save us substantial money. There's been some estimates and could be as high as $20,000 for the summer that would be necessary for us to hire people to do that work, either on overtime or additional folks. I just think it's important to balance those things when you make those comments. Uh, That's all. Who, who owns the west side walks? That's a that's a whole other quagmire. I'm not going to get into. It's well, not a trash issue, but the state owns. But but the those west trash side. barrels are trash barrels that we right. pick up during the week, I, and in the I, nights and weekends they do that right. work for us. So don't forget that that savings of could be twenty thousand or more, Mary Louise. Well, it's a big savings to the community by the work that happens there. But finally, what I would mm -hmm. like to see, and you mentioned the composting, but that's. Um, probably difficult for many uh, families or uh, businesses to do. What I'd like to see us do is get on the bandwagon for trash to ash. Get those big facilities, I think there's a big one in uh, Andover, and uh, all of the trash, not, way, not glass, but all of the trash, including uh, composting, uh, you know, leftover food and all that and that can produce energy. Uh, and I think it's a smarter way to dispose of the waste. So just a, just a thought, and I appreciate sure. what the committee did. Uh, that was uh, a lot of work, and it would be a good idea to continue it to. Uh, so if I may, on that last point yeah. of the waste energy plants, I mean, that's absolutely something that's available to us. They have been bidders in the past, and, and we I'd anticipate like that they will be a bidder in the RFP that's going out now. Good. It really comes down to a cost issue for the town. What's the most beneficial to our folks mm -hmm. um, on, on the cost issue? So mm -hmm. we'll be evaluating that. Uh, we feel, well, based on some preliminary discussions we had, we'll probably see waste energy plants bidding on our stuff, mm -hmm. and we'll just have to see what the net dollars look like. Because I think that's the future. Okay. Regina. Right. Um, thank you, uh, Deputy Manager Sullivan. And I really appreciate the work that you, I've watched most of the meetings and I've read the minutes and I really appreciate the work that all of you guys have done. And I was glad to hear from our, especially Hartner tonight because I know he brought up some of the 
ideas that I know a lot of the business owners down at the beach because the beach does get singled out in this issue. That's just the way it is that they have and that they are willing to do. And I think that with like what you're saying, there's still a lot of, you know, development that we need to figure out. I don't, th personally, I don't think that we're recycling the way we should be right now. Mm -hmm. That's not really anyone's fault. That's just the way it is. And I think there's plenty of options that we need to explore and I'm definitely in agreement that we need to continue at some form of a trash and recycling committee. But I also wanted to touch upon, well, Mary Louise brought it up again, and it was brought up at public comment. And I've done my own trash analysis, so, because, you know, it's so much fun talking trash. But I wanted to bring up, uh, this is just strictly looking at figures, figures that come from a public works maintained schedule that shows their total tons that they deal with mm -hmm. every year. And I also got a schedule from the finance department that shows what we charge the state of New Hampshire for the trash that they bring to our transfer station on an annual basis. And going back to 2015, all the way through the first nine months of 2019, so from 15 to 18, the state trash total is averages about 2% of our total trash intake for the whole year. Okay, so that is for 15 through 18. And we get, I don't know, we've made between 21,000 and 19, we've made $43,000. Well, for charged. For the charge. With charged, yeah. So that's for the first nine months. Now take it in 2019, that is mostly because we had them pretty much stop recycling. So we're taking that all as waste. So the amount that we actually take from the state of New Hampshire is very little. The, the majority of the trash happens in the summer months, but it also happens not just in the summer months busy at the beach, it's the influx that the town has. April through September, 90% 90 90 of our trash hits the transfer station. So I feel, looking at numbers and looking at the discussions and living here my whole life, that I think that the commercial businesses of the beach, uh, I'm sure they contribute to a lot of the trash, but I think that we're blaming them for just the issue that we have. I mean, we have a high influx. There's people that are only here from May to whatever it is, August, September, October. Now, if you look at the months consecutively, every single April, every single May, every single June, June, it's pretty much the majority of our trash. We don't have beautiful Aprils and beautiful Mays and beautiful Junes every single summer. I wish we did, but we don't. So I think that... Depends on our definition of beautiful. <laughs> right, I guess so. But I know that a lot of waste happens during those you know, specific three or sure. four months, but it is only for three or four months. And we do have to remember that those people do pay a lot in taxes. They pay the highest tax rate, especially the ones that live in the village district. So I just wanted to point that out. I was shocked that the state trash only accounted for about 2 to 4% of the total trash on an annual basis, but it does. That's a very, very small number, very small. And we are getting a fee for that number, and they do pick up the west side. So I think that's very important to... Uh, to make note of. And also, we have, we received some draft warrant articles that we haven't really discussed yet, mm -hmm. but there is yeah. one in there from Public Works about doing some type of a study mm -hmm. for handling waste at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. Is that in? So some of those were preliminary things done early by Fred. We'll be consolidating all of those so when you see your final list, oh. if, if, you, if you feel these are things you want to see again, we will formulate those for you. Okay. You and tell I'm, us tonight, give us direction, that's what we'll formulate. It'll be part of your packages. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I have, as of 9.30 so far, the year-to-date revenues collected from the transfer station, two line items, totaled almost $261,000. Right. So ideally, if we could get that $261,000 to go into some type of a revolving fund that we could use to offset our expenses rather than just going into the general fund. Is that what the committee had in mind? Yeah, that's, what, that's those, what I would eventually That's what those funds do. And, and absolutely right. now, um, legal has told us there has to be two different types of funds because of limitations in the law. Mm -hmm. One is a revolving, one is a special revenue, mm -hmm. one would be for recycling, one for trash. So we'd have to identify how that, that happens. Yeah. But again, the key is, you're absolutely right, we can do that offset. 
but understand how that works. When we take that, that right now we have two sides of the ledger. On this side we pay, on this side we, we do the ledger. When we move it into that fund, mm -hmm. those $200,000 won't be revenue coming in to offset taxes. There'll be an increase there. They'll go in and out and pay for itself, essentially. Right, but, but it's going to offset the expense. That's exactly right. That, that makes sense. Yeah. So, all right, thank you. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, thank you. I think you guys did a good job. I also watched a lot of uh, your meetings. I don't have a life, I guess. That's all I could do. <laughs> but uh, you did a really good job. I like the idea that, that Dave came in that said the businesses are ready to kind of step up and start thinking about the glass and start reducing that. I think that's important. The composting, I think, is... Uh, a super idea. I think that's, uh, I was in a clam shop up in Maine and they had the big composting there, you know, and a lot of the, a lot of the trash goes in there. It saves. You do. You see that in many places now. Yeah, yeah. it saves a ton. Uh, the educating on the recycling, I think that's a great idea. I think hiring a consultant is a good idea. You know, some people might think we're kicking the, ro the can down the road, but we're not. We want to do this. We want to do it properly when we do it. We want to make sure that it's not something that's going to come back in, in, in five years again with people saying, let's redo it, let's redo it. It's not right. So I think, I think you guys were on the right track. I think you came in with a good report. Um, the one question I have is you did deal with the fairness in the committee, I, I know. And I know there were places that lost their recycling bins last year. Did you come up with a recommendation for those going back to those people? Yeah, no, what we recommended was what the policy of the board is currently um, in some of those other, the one-offs, no, we haven't specifically talked about particular locations. There were a couple of folks that talked about their own circumstance, but in general, I think the recommendation was to go back to the board's policy. And in talking with Public Works, I think there's some adjustments in what they're seeing curbside, the real thing of, this is a new unit, as Mrs. Woolsey had pointed out. Really, it's not what your policy, it, 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 they should be on their own. Their documents show they should own. It's a new thing that maybe has been built in the last year or so, but for some reason slipped through the cracks and there's material being picked up there versus another unit which may have had recycling for 15 years and then suddenly that stops. So there, I think there's some of those one-off things we probably need to address and deal with them one at a time. But the global policy is what we focused on. And, and DPW is going to try to do that? or If you give us that direction, we will, yes. Okay. Thank you. I think a lot of work went into it. I think uh, I like the idea of the uh, bottle ban, if you want to call it, on, on uh, the beer and, and uh, there isn't much you can do it, I think. Uh, but if we do that, I think we need to have a place where people can dump the glass, that they can bring that so they I can I may have it. been uh, or, short on saying that that's underway. Public Works is trying to pilot that now and put locations for the coming season able to do that in convenient locations. Even if we went so far as to one day a week, that's picked up just glass. Yeah. You know, and, and that could be done so that it's separated from everything else. Uh, when we're down the beach. So that's a very good point that I, I think, I, if I may jump back in on, is in talking to the one expert that came in with us about these modified programs or these pay-as-you-throw programs. In order for them to be successful, we've got to talk about them, but many of them then get piloted. They run them for a short period of time to see, mm -hmm. were our assumptions correct? Did we get it right before you launch it full? And I think that's very important here because Many of us come in with our preconceived ideas what it looks like. I, sure. I have heard one discussion where a description that an individual gave us that the pay as you throw became private haulers in a prior community they lived in and what have you. Um, and I get that. I've seen that. We've heard those stories. But that's not at all what we're talking about here. Our DPW is going to do that work. They do it the best. They do it efficiently. They do it well. Um, it's just the manner in which we do it. And do we look to generate a revenue to help offset some of our expenses somewhere? And looking at your your recommendations, I, I I totally agree. We should you know the the additional labor down there. That's one of our departments that really needs the extra help, and I think that would go a long way with doing this. So, thank good you. report. Thank, thank you. you for bringing it. Yeah. Um, what would people do with the glass? If I'm talking about people, at, you know, in private residences. Right now, there's no discussion about private residences doing anything different. Mm -hmm. So if you have your, you know, you're recycling those currently, um, I think the discussions you've been talking about are really focused on the large scale, what's happening down the beach. 
because of the tourist nature of it. Yeah. There's a lot of glass that's yeah. produced. Yeah. So uh, none of our discussions really, or I shouldn't say none, some felt if we're going to do it for one, we have to do it for everybody. Uh, but realistically, the focus right now is on our volume. What's the big end? And that's been the discussion at the business community, as you heard Mr. Hyde talk about, of the idea of potentially reducing that. It's a safety factor in that, you know, you know, a lot of glass is found down on the beach. And that glass can often come from, you know, folks that will go into a convenience store and buy the beer and bring it onto the beach or buy glass bottles. And to try and reduce some of that has the benefit of being safe on the beach as well as reducing weight for us. So to answer your question in general, what we picture right now is diverting the glass if we can have clean glass, that is a collection central point, both at the transfer station and perhaps different places convenient for these businesses to take it. They dump their glass. It's not commingled. And therefore, as Public Works has said, we can get a reduced price for clean glass because it's easier. We're still going to pay for it. Um, we're still going to have to transport it and yep. deal with those separate locations. So it is yet to be seen what the savings could be, but that's an opportunity there. And I think the ultimate goal is, as you've heard, the business community, they want to try and reduce the number of bottles that are used in the businesses down there and switch to alternatives, which reduces that heavy glass. So how long would that take for them to put a, uh, to get people not to have the glass period? Like they're saying that it's uh, everybody's behind it, like the... Uh, the liquor sales people and stuff like that. How long would that take? We have a. I, I have not put a timeline. That's the feedback. But would I, we need a warrant article to do that. I no, I don't think so. I think that's the thing, Rick, about some of these that the, the, you can decide. The strength of weakness on the warrant article is the idea of hiring the consultant pay as you throw. Mm -hmm. One of the recommendations from folks was put it on a warrant article. That does two things for you. It takes the temperature of the community in order to see whether they're even at all interested in a pay-as-you-throw program. So we get that benefit and, you know, then approve it or not there. The downside to that is I think we do lose some momentum between this point right now we're having these discussions as we're preparing to lead into the season. If we hire a consultant, successful programs that we've seen, it takes time to build, A, a program that's good for us, <coughs> B, a consensus and support in the community for what you're doing. And that, I think, is probably a smarter approach for us. Yeah, but what about uh, how fast could if we get to the point where we wouldn't have glass being sold uh, through the liquor sales at the beach? Could that be done by next year? Well, I think this summer, summer we can season? have an impact. I, I can't say that I can guarantee that we'll have yeah. no glass. Yeah. But I think the idea is to start with your largest folks first and get them on board. It is a voluntary process. We don't have the authority, according to our attorney, to say, pass an ordinance that says there will be no glass. I do know some of our state reps are working on a thing of that nature, and the senator are working on something of that nature to give the authority. You've seen uh, Portsmouth talking about doing single-use plastics and such. Um, so there is some work being done potentially to restrict that and give some authority potentially. But for us, I think what we do, uh, our recommendations are, uh, recommend that we get this consultant on board as quickly as we can, start developing that, and then we work for this season to be prepared to implement some of these with the business community. Let's get them in and have yeah. discussions. Can yeah. we make that happen? I, for one, am in favor of not kicking the uh, bag down the road mm -hmm. and just doing something now, okay. not waiting. Uh, I think it's far too long. We've talked trash all 15 years that I've been here, and I've seen it kick down the road over and over and over again. So I think that... Um, uh, uh, we need to look at these uh, things like for instance we just talked about glass I think we definitely need to look about the bag and tag it's very very successful in Exeter there's virtually I have never ever heard a person complain about it over there I think the people that I know that live there are very proud that it has re uh, resulted in uh, an excellent amount of recycling I think that's really the only way to get the recycling going, in my opinion. Um, I like the idea of the Mr. Fox, and I'm not so familiar with the textiles, but that doesn't sound like a bad idea. I definitely like the idea of uh, having a special fund created uh, so that it utilizes uh, a way that the tax, uh, you know, that it will reflect in what people pay for taxes. I think it's also... Um, very, um, I'd like to see all, as many, it to be, a, I'd like to see that be the same for pretty much everyone. The one um, 
exception that I would have to think twice about and would rather have a discussion here at the board is about the condominiums. Um, I think that as far as I'm concerned, everybody that's, uh, all, I've sat on the zoning board myself and watched that the, all of these people have been told that they weren't getting um, uh, uh, pickup of their trash. I really don't see how anyone should expect it when they bought the condominiums with the idea, the whole idea of condominiums being uh, put in these neighborhoods where there's such high density is that they do take care of that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, now the uh, place next to me, uh, Little Jack's, that's going condos, which is a great thing as far as I'm concerned. That's what the guy, you know, the, the owner wanted to do with this property. It's always been his plan. Well, you know, there will be 30 units there, and even if it is replacing a restaurant, but it's still a lot of people living there mm -hmm. on one piece of land. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why anyone would expect to have their trash picked no, up. No, I agree. That's what your policy is, and yeah, the right. committee and embraced that like going to forward. I see that. Yeah. There's only one... Um, uh, place, you know, there's that one condominium that was approved, uh, which is uh, the one that was done by Warren Kelly, which I believe is six units, um, and that they were told that they were going to get their trash picked up, even though it was six units. That's the one that I have, I would have to think about, because um, I, I saw it over and over again. It was discussed. It was determined that those that was going to be picked up. Um, I w would like to, you know, understand how many more employees we would need with uh, the idea about the bag and tag. Um, and you just mentioned one. Is that? That's what Public Works is requesting at this time to implement some of the things we've talked about in the committee report. Now, again, the board has to deal with, and Fred's office, we need to come back with you. If that's something you're interested in exploring, how can we accomplish that? There's a couple of different ways, depending on what you recommend and tell us to do here, that we may be able to fund that. That I don't see happening until next year, at least after the town meeting, based on some of the results of, of what we come out of here. Mm -hmm. But how, so in other words, we could take the money from the unspent um, funds that we have to do, to hire the consultant? Yes. Well, you can, out of the surplus that we're dealing with this year, you can uh, recommend we'll go out and get a, a, a find a consultant for you with a contract. If it's less than the 15000 which we fully expect it would be, we could come in to you with a recommendation to hire these folks. Um, and the scope of the work that we would ask them to do would be part of negotiating that agreement. So, yeah, we, we definitely could make that happen if that's what the, the board chooses. And do you agree with that, Fred? <coughs> We take it from the bottom line of the existing town budget because we can't take it from the honest, unreserved yeah. fund balance. Oh, okay. Well, that's, you know, kind of what I'm talking about. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I would like to see something done. I, I don't want to wait for another year of the meeting of the uh, recycling committee. I think that is what I call kicking it down the uh, road. And, you know, I would say that we should put a time frame, as far as I'm concerned, of let's get something done by the time next summer starts. I would like to see something happening myself. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, to, but to implement, I think, a timeline to implement a pay-as-you-throw, mm -hmm. a bag and tag, and I want the vision of that we have bags everywhere. Because what would work for Hampton is something that we manage within our, our, our current setup. I, I, nobody wants bags again. That's a problem for us. But there is a, mo a program we can figure out with this, these folks and we can put together for Hampton on how we pay per throw, whatever that looks mm -hmm. like and what's approved. And that would be done with the, with the consultant. So timeline, what I would envision is we would bring them on board now. There's some data you need. There's some things that need to happen. But to think that the timeline we would have a Warren article for this year's town meeting I think is extremely unrealistic. Well, do we have to have a Warren article? No. No, well, that's what I mean. It. I'm looking to see something done sooner so, than later. Th and that's a discussion for, for you folks to deal with. But I think the first thing is to develop that program, take the consensus of the information we have, continue that work, formulate a program that can work for us. There'll be multiple stages of that in my vision. And we could come back at every stage when we have to have approvals to the board for approval for that. Yeah. And but I the implementation, Rick, of these other things, they can voluntarily be done, and we can continue to work with our community and folks to start doing those things 
right now. Yeah, and I am in favor of um, working with the businesses and working with the committee. I'm not saying that I don't want to see the committee, but I'm looking to see something done sooner than later. Yeah. I think it just to kick it down the road and see a whole number of summer go by without something happening to me. I agree, support. but but we also need to, as we've done the times before, I think these things have been born out of more of a you know, a, a, an incident or an issue where it comes and we put it on and there wasn't a really good described vision, I believe, in the times we've done this before. I think that's mm -hmm. vital. Yeah. And according to the consultant who has success in doing this, once they build the program that fits your needs, that takes time, they've never had one fail to implement mm -hmm. because it takes time. You tailor it to this, the particular community and their needs get buy-in from folks, that takes time to develop so and build. So was there a consultant that was there at the meeting? Yeah, it was one of the subject matter experts we brought in, um, and they are uh, a company that does this primarily in, in the, the New England area, but the, their folks are all over the country that they deal with. Yeah, I would definitely like to see that you look in to see who Exeter used because yep. they have an excellent system. That Dover has well a good one, them. some other folks as well. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yep. Regina? Yeah. I. Can you explain Paige Eastville? Because I'm hearing all these things about Exeter, and I mean, do Exeter have weekly rentals and three or four day rentals like we have here? I mean, we have people in three, and out of here. Three and four day rentals. Well, like Paige Eastville, how is that sure. going to work in the summertime? Um, well, the, we had had a discussion of a model. Museums. We had had a discussion of a model. There's a couple of ways. One we discussed would work like this: um, if let's say two barrels, just like a resident has two barrels. I own a company or a business and I use 15 barrels. We could work out a payment scheme or payment that they pay for the extra barrels. Uh, could be an up advance during the summer. You're going to pay, I have seven days a week, I'm going to pay the extra. Uh, there's ways you can do that that are, we talked about frankly just a stickering system where it's kind of like the beach stickers we put on or the stickers we put to park. Something that would go on the barrel to signal the driver, yep, this one's paid for for the year. I pick up these two I pick, you know, that are appropriate to be picked up. That's one quick version. Again, I think to go through that with successful programs in the past, that work needs to be assisted with us with a consultant that does this for a living. So to see you're the not talking about actual bags. No, I, I think I don't. I don't think so. I don't think bags no, are an that's appropriate what way. Does. Now, if we, again, there has to be a way to track that revenue if we go. And I think that's the whole point right here in this discussion is why there's more exploration and more study that needs to be done to see what's effective for us. And, and I to think knee jerk and jump to it, we're going to end up with the same result we've had before. Where if people are confused, they're going to say no to it. We have to get folks yeah, on board. And, you know, that's, that does make sense. But the thing is, I would like to see everyone treated equally. And I think what's the advantage for the taxpayer is that the business people would pay the same as the residents. Right. And that's what they – I'm not sure what Exeter does about business. I really don't know that. Yep. Um, I but, talked to an Exeter resident about some of that who have the businesses along the front and where they do a bag system – they actually have colored bags. Now, we can still do a version of that, but we want to use our canisters. So, yeah, they, they, some of the commercials, I understand, are to pay as you go. So to explain it a little further, what does that mean? We say fairness. The committee struggled with fair, right? I mean, because it's all how do we define that individually. Yeah. And really, when you came to it, there's a pendulum of fair. The easiest way where everybody's treated the exact same is, uh, on the one hand, you can't. What's the town's obligation? Mm -hmm. We have a transfer station or a place for them to dispose of trash. Everybody bring your stuff. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah. Is it realistic for this no. town? Absolutely not. No. Um, and the other end is everybody pays their own way. You pay for what you use. And again, a realistic part of that, yeah. twice before the town has said no. Maybe somewhere in the middle is what's appropriate for this town. We need further study <laughs> and further collection on that. So I think to your point, Rick, we can get traction by deal with some of our weighty issues, continue the education, spread the word on Mr. Fox to reduce it, and deal with this idea with the business community of reducing glass or eliminating glass from our waste stream as much as possible, and alternatively going to other forms of mm. beverage. Mm -hmm. And it sounds, that one thing of dealing with a vendor, I saw, thought it sounded tremendous. Yeah, no, and I understand that, but again, I see that, you know, I think the, the people that are, you know, the, at the beach, they don't use it in the winter time, they should be given a credit for what they don't use in the winter. But it should be the same. I think it should be the same for And everybody. that's where, again, as I a think balance, that's why Exeter's a works. pay as you throw is exactly right. Um, mm -hmm. One of the people actually who was there from the Mr. Fox, the waste diversion, 
one of the young ladies that was from the company there lives in Dover, and she talked about it, and she was pretty funny. In a two-person household, she said, I, I, I stuff that bag for every last thing I can, and I don't put out a trash bag, but every other month. Mm -hmm. Everything else is composted or recycled. <clears throat> and that is another issue that the way the experts have told us that you really reduce your contamination, have a more robust recycling program in these other programs, is it's an economic incentive. Mm -hmm. If I can just throw anything I want in there and there's no consequence to it, yeah. that behavior will probably continue. Yeah. Unless there's some sort of a incentive to do something different, we're absolutely going to have the altruistic folks that compost right now. We may grow that because there is, frankly, a lot more environmental awareness today than there was eight, ten years ago. So there's some successes and reductions we'll find from that, I believe. And I think they're great programs. But to have a substantial, cohesive program is why the committee feels the study of a helping this outside consultant will help us get to where we need to be. Um, I, yeah, again, it sounds like there's a little kick down the road here. I, and that's I hear what that. I don't like. Yep, I hear and that. I'd like to see everybody, particularly the residents, treated fairly. We agree. And I'd like to see the businesses, okay, they don't use it in the wintertime. Um, so maybe they get, you know, a better, some deal where it th works out in the idea about the bag yep. and tag yep. or whatever. But I can't see how this wouldn't possibly help reduce the taxes if there was money coming in and the money being used in some type of a revolving way to... Uh, I, I, I agree completely, but that's incumbent on the decisions that, yeah. that this board, the budget committee, and the town as a whole makes, yes. If we save two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars, the question came up, and you know, there's the cynical people of, "Oh, your taxes will never go down." Well, I, I get that, I understand that cynicism, but it's the community that develops a budget. We're in that process currently, and if we reduce and save that from an expense side, we don't need that. But there are other high priorities. Mm -hmm. that, you know, this, that's the process. Okay. But we would absolutely offset if we don't need the money, mm -hmm. you know, Fred, Fred's office and ours are very simple. Mm -hmm. We're not putting it in there. You okay. know, we, we put in what we believe. I, I think we need a motion to, uh, to hire this consultant with how Fred said to uh, yeah. get the funds. So and I'll, that make that, I'll make that motion that we, we uh, move I'll, forward. I'll second it, and I'd like to say something. Uh, okay. But, and then the other thing, I, I, I still think we need to look at doing the uh, – one, two, three uh, warrant articles. I think we need to support those, the three that they brought up. Which One, we mentioned. Those. Which would be the, uh, the fund, the revolving fund to support trash collection, a special revenue fund for the recycling, so it moves that funds from that. And the other one is uh, to authorize the purchase of a new trash recycle truck as required by so here's what I would say. If you stick with your motion on the consultant, that's something that we need to work on immediately. Yep. Those I was other good. items, if you give us a consensus, you will see them in your packet. We'll work on those. And as you start to deal with warrant articles, they'll be on your table. Right. Okay. And okay. Jim? I think the important thing to look at when we're talking about other towns that are successful is how long did it take them to get there to be successful. And yep. I think that's what Jamie's saying, is if you have a consultant come in, you want to make sure the program is in place that's going to work and not just putting them I in. Mean, so we're not kicking the, the can down the road. What we're doing is saying, let's do it properly. Let's bring it in. Let's, let's make sure that the Warren article, whatever we put out there, is the one that's going to work. So I mean, Exeter might be very, very <laughs> successful, but how long did it take them to get there? Yeah. They were successful at the beginning. Well, yeah. how long did, but how about, you know, I think we're going to think the about that. Yeah, and I agree. It's, it's are, so. the, the, the program has to be tailored to the community and what the community wants. That's yeah, vitally well, important. And that's what I want is to make sure it's fair for everyone. And uh, that's yes, what's sir. not happening today. Yeah. Well, then again, that definition of fairness is a moving target we found oh, on the committee. I think it's time to not kick and that the, down the road. Agreed. And the... They, it, we're, we're a lot different than Exeter is. Much different. Yeah, well, you know what? Exeter has a huge uh, commercial uh, presence, probably bigger than Hamptons. Not not a transient or right. part-time one. That's we have the, the volume is what's very, very unique community. about us. Right. We have a short intense span volume period for, is a unique right. for us. Right, so I think that's why we need to have the consultant come in and look at it. I, think mm -hmm. that's the, I yeah. agree with that. Can I agree with that as well, but um, I'd like to have a quick discussion on it. So, yeah, so the pay as you throw, my concern is with the transients, as you just brought up again. So if they don't do what they're supposed to do and they just throw everything away, 
-hmm. that's going to get charged to our guys, the taxpayers, right? Uh, no, I don't know that I follow your question. Well, the, the whole point of a pay and throw is that you eliminate pay for as much what trash you as use. possible. Yep. Yep. So if you have a renter there for a week, I mean, they're just going to throw everything away. You should. The people should be giving them the bags. Yeah, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I, I have an experience of my, my family member rents a place, and it has well, a I mean, very yeah, robust. I mean, I would yeah. do it too. But so I mean, are there going to be, yeah, and again, I don't want to get off track, but this is mm -hmm. why we think it's important to talk with someone who's an expert in this area because, right. hey, let's simple the idea of the modified we talked about a moment ago of, all right, everybody's going to get, I mean, just hypothetically, you're going to get two free pickups, but you're going to pay for everything else. Mm -hmm. What works at the beach, let's think about that, that we have to modify for us is, okay, you're at Regina's restaurant, and you have 15 barrels, and you're paying for 14 of those barrels, and you put them out. Well, what happens when somebody starts throwing their beach chairs and there are other right. things that aren't appropriate in this? So we yeah. have to deal with that issue because it's real. Mm -hmm. We deal with it. Yeah. That's unique to our beach circumstance. We see it. So we're going to have to find a solution to that. It's not as simple as just paying because we're going to have to find another solution. No, they and should have the barrels not yeah, showing. Exactly so right. So there will be some in, other things that we'll have to create out. for our circumstance to address Great. all so of these So this motion would... Be, be hire the consultant. Yes, and then we can to hear see what how the consultant we can, has to and say. And we can take that out of the current budget? Yes. We'll come back to you based on if this vote is approved. We will then go out, look for, engage, get numbers, come back to you uh, before we engage that person. But if okay. this is authorizing us to go out and explore that and put that together for you is, is how I assume that motion yes. is being made. All right, thanks. Yeah, okay. and I'm just going to throw this out there. I know in Exeter a few years ago it was $2 a bag. I think it's two seventy five now, so it does, the bag does go up as it does. things go on. Prices vary based upon what you want to recoup. Right. Mrs. Wolseley. I don't want to see us with a ton of special money articles. We've got enough stuff on our shoulders. Uh, but I think that the uh, we need, really need to explore that trash to ash stuff. Yeah, that'll okay. be a that'll be a discussion part of the RFP Gotta that goes it. out on our other right All those in favor? No. Uh, are you for or against? Well, I'm I'm being nice. For or against? She's for. For, okay, and unanimous. Thank Very you. good. Now, I assume, did I catch that there's a consensus on these other items in the recommendations? What about the issue of establishing the standing committee? You all, is that no, something I you folks want to I heard a consensus for that. Yeah. Very good. So what we'll do then is, um, I guess, put out, there are some folks on this committee who want to do it. I think it's, you don't want to have 15 people. I think that's a challenge. We want to reduce the numbers perhaps to this thing going forward. So we'll come forward with a proposal to you um, and ask folks who are interested in doing it to put their names forward again and ask the board later to, to deal with that if that's what yeah. you'd like. Okay. And I'm looking forward to um, hearing from this consultant. I think we should do it as soon as possible. Agreed. Because I agree, I, I'm for moving forward. I'm not waiting. I don't want to see us wait until another summer with the committee, no matter how good they are. I think we need to do something now. Not trying to overstep, but the phone calls are already out, assuming that maybe yeah. you folks would have supported that idea. So hopefully we'll have something for you fairly okay, quickly. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. For everything that you did. Moving on to uh, Chief Sawyer. Nice job on the North Shore. Um, it well, it remains to be seen. We're working. We're working no. our way the right way. We'll hope uh, we okay. have the now the state for on the North Shore issues. If I could quick, just throw that in there. Very the good. state's pointing their beach meeting uh, mm -hmm. tentatively. It's the 19th, but we're waiting for a final, and that'll get put out. Good. Once we get it, we'll put it out on our page at the PD. Where and would I'll it be. be? Uh, it will be at their facility at the state park as they yeah. usually do it, uh -huh. and I will be present to yeah. discuss the North Shore issues yeah. uh, along that, with the state That has folks. to be resolved. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, first item I'd like to speak to you tonight is uh, we're in a position right now where some of our ballistic vests, uh, what was referred to as a level three vest, mm -hmm. which is the heavier mm -hmm. vest that we put on if there were an active shooter situation, yeah. not the ones the officers wear. Uh, daily, but these are the ones that are in the back of the cruisers uh, that are resistant uh, up to rifle rounds. Okay, so they're much heavier and cumbersome, uh, the ones we currently have, and they're five years beyond their warranty. Uh, it's time for us to uh, remove those. Technology has moved rapidly in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, 
a vest out there that's much whiter and more practical for our use were we to have to respond uh, in a situation like that. So I'm looking, um, it's one of these things, I want to use money out of the asset forfeiture account, okay. which is the money we, yeah. use, we, we collect from our investigations, mm -hmm. primary dealing with drug dealing. Um, I have the authority through the federal guidelines to do this, but I wouldn't spend money of this nature without coming through before the board. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to purchase 20 vests uh, at a price of $690 per unit and a total cost of 13800 We currently have over 40000 in the mm -hmm. asset forfeiture account. So I'll so move. I'll second. Any discussion? And how long are these good for? Generally, ballistic vests come with a five-year warranty. Now, they ballistically, if they're kept in a dry place and not abused, they'll last much longer than we've taken 20-year-old vests and mm -hmm. put them at the range and they, and they hold, hold their water. But yeah. it's not something you want to chance that it's held up mm -hmm. uh, to standards, you know, and we're five years beyond the expiration date, so okay, it's time okay. to change them out. And this Good doesn't idea. have to go out to bid? <laughs> no, it's under $15,000, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a yeah. sole source, and it's a state bid price. Yeah. This is a state bid price, if I didn't mention that, so. What Good. do you do with the old ones? The old ones, uh, <laughs> we've used them to dem do demonstrations to show people that they work, to put, you know, build faith in yeah. the officers that the, the others were buying are protective and they'll work. There's also companies that will take them and make a, a ballistic blanket for us, believe it or not. <laughs> if we had to go into a situation where we had to cover a group of people, yeah. we could bring this piece of equipment that's sewn together with uh, other yeah. similar materials and we could use them for that. I right now, a lot of them are just sitting in our quartermaster room and just stacked up as yeah. we trade out our vests to newer ones, we just have them stacked in because that's not something you want to be throwing out into the, yeah. the transfer station or leaving laying around for people to collect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a first and a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Uh, the next item, uh, I wanted to talk to you. I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for a vote tonight, but just a discussion on variable message boards. As we saw with our water emergency, um, getting the word out and letting people know what's going on is critical. Um, we also saw that with the Legionnaires outbreak the year before. And during our normal course of business with the many events we run in this town, particularly the rerouting of traffic for things like the Seafood Fest and the Fourth of July particularly, these variable message, message boards are critical to us uh, <coughs> accomplishing our mission. Yeah. So the ones we have, we've had for over 10 years. Yeah. Uh, they, they have been used in a very salt air environment and they've done very well for us, but they're starting to fail to the point mm -hmm. we won't be able to repair them. The computer boards on one of them, I was trying to program in front of the fire station for their, for their event, and it was just, it wasn't what I typed in, that's all I can tell you. Um, it was just all over the map, and it really, it's getting hotter and hotter to repair those, and the rust, and we've um, changed out the stability legs, so we're looking at... Um, how many and how much? Well, I guess that's the discussion. Yeah. I would like to get at least three units, and they range in price from 14195 to 14665 and these are also the ones that we would have that we could program from a laptop or even a, a cellular device that we could program. We wouldn't have to physically go out yeah. there yeah. and program it, but that would also include a cost of $180 per unit each year after the first year to have the modem set up, in the, in the, mm -hmm. which we would have to build in our future budgets. And I understand that this is a little different, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Sure. What about um, a message board for the front of the town hall? Well, we've discussed that. Ideally, what I'd like to see us do in the future as emergency management director is to have permanently fixed message boards in certain locations in town. One in the front of the town office, one as you come over the bridge mm -hmm. uh, down at the beach. Uh, another one as you come in on 101 uh, where the road di where 101 divides. Um, at Church Street, one right there, and possibly another one somewhere up in the uh, Winneconnick Road <coughs> area as it comes mm -hmm. into the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This would enable us, uh, you know, our main areas of traffic that we deal with, with most vehicles pass coming or leaving or in those areas. Yeah. We can look at permanently the fixed message boards that would be mm -hmm. a lot nicer looking than the, the big gaudy orange things that we throw out there, but that could be a cost. I haven't priced those out. That could yeah. be a very costly endeavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People have mentioned, too, something similar to what's at the, the high school or something yep, like that. Yep, some, like something along that line. The middle school. Or Decorative whatever. looks nice. Uh, I think yeah. those are things we could explore. 
Um, but for the time being, the uh, would not even if we did that, they would not negate my need of the. Uh, I understand the that. four units that I. Uh, uh, who am I looking at? Hold on one second. So if we did this, it would be four units. Our preferred one is the Wanko board at thirteen six ninety five per unit, which would be a with shipping fifty six thousand seven hundred eighty dollars. Mm -hmm. So there's a number of ways we could fund this. Um, these would be used um, with our many events. They could be looked at through Fund 26. Fund 26 allows us to use the money in that fund to purchase to pay the officers and the firefighters working details, or to purchase equipment that could be used for those types of details. So we would be using these during special events uh, that we could. I think we'd be fine. We might want to run it through legal counsel, but I'm confident that uh, we would be able to make the purchase right from Fund 26 or unexpended funds remaining in the budget this year. Yeah, is there ways that it could be a, 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 an income producer for these people that use them? We certainly could with uh, special events. Uh, bill, if they wanted to use our sign boards for their events, mm -hmm. we can bill them for that. I think if we're going to pay that kind of money, I think that's what needs to be done. That's I'd be in favor We can do of. that. Mrs. Wolfson? I also move that we um, confirm the message board purchases that the chief has. Do you want to vote tonight or do you want I, br I was just bringing up for discussion. Uh, you might want to uh, talk to Mark uh, and talk about the possibility of the Fund 26. Uh, that's really a decision for you folks. I'm just okay. offering options on the cost. I would rather wait and, oh, and get okay. more information on it. Yes. And from Fred and yeah. Mark. So, Fred, can you look okay. into that Certainly. and put that on the agenda yep. for the next meeting? Yep. Regina? So, Chief, we also, these signs are also used for when we have the road construction, like, yes. down on. Yeah. Yes. So we closed Ann's Lane, and now we have. Currently, the uh, Public Works got two new boards. Right. Um, Today. I have yeah. three boards, but they are failing miserably. They're yeah. starting. The one that's out in front of the fire station right now, or may I got moved today. Mm -hmm. um, little things like the stability uh, legs on those things, they, they rust and they go through them quickly, and you have to replace them. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're throwing money into equipment that's probably not going to be here in a year. Well, I just know when we work on major roads like Mill Road, Ann's yeah. Lane, the message boards are very important because I yes. still automatically yeah. go that way. So when the message board's there, it helps divert me to go somewhere else. So yeah. It's very Good. convenient. Yeah. Thank you. So I will speak with Mark tomorrow at staff meeting about talking about uh, viability of Fund 26, and maybe we can get back yeah, to we'll, we'll, we'll sure. Fred's going to put it on the agenda for yeah. next week. We're going to take part of it out of there and part of it under the un undesignated fund, however it works out. Uh, we have to take it out of current. We can't take it out of there unless we put it on a town meeting warrant out. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Next, we have the two 2020 departmental budgets. Fred, I believe our finance director is going to give you some adjusted information here. I am. We have two things. <laughs> One is the estimated revenues for this coming year plus the estimated budget. Thank you, Christy. Yep. So the estimated revenues were in your box earlier today. Um, and, okay, Fred, this is an updated one of those. Okay. And these are all of the adjustments that I believe the board Thank you. has had before them at different times when departments were up here, and I can run through those real quick if you'd like. Yep. Our goal, I believe, and Fred can confirm, but I believe our goal is to finish this budget process up tonight so that we can get it off to the budget committee this week. That's my hope. So um, if you would like, I can run through these different items on this adjustment sheet. Please do. Or, okay. So the town clerk, when she was here, had suggested that um, some wages could be removed from part-time wages. So I have a decrease in that line of $4,298. Mm -hmm. The next line, Social Security, Medicare, and Retirement, those are all related to any wage line. So the part-time wage line that we just talked about and then other wage lines. So those are adjusted according to that. Health insurance. When the budget was put together, we did not have the rates. As I had reported to you at one of the earlier meetings, the health medical insurance went up 6.1 and dental went up 3.2. So that's the adjustment that's needed to mm -hmm. cover all current positions 
that are in the budget the for full time that we have to provide health insurance to employees. Regular wages um, for DPW is an adjustment that was brought to the board tonight in their non-public, I believe. Uh, Part-time wages in public works, there had been a reduction there that the department had suggested in regards to a summer intern that they have not been filling lately. Um, federal stormwater requirements, DPW had requested that some money be removed, $1,160 be reduced from that line. Repairs and maintenance, public works had some contracts that had come in and that that line needed to be increased to by $19,334. Hired equipment, $500 increase. Sidewalks, $5,000 removed that the uh, management has put in. Career incentives for the solid waste, that's a collective bargaining needed six hundred more dollars to cover. I think it was for their road mm -hmm. scholars. Uh, membership dues one thousand and sixty dollar increase. Monitoring and inspection landfill monitoring inspection six thousand four hundred and seventy dollars. Groundwater monitoring a decrease of twenty thousand five hundred and fifty one dollars. OT wages at the transfer station. This was in regards to the Sundays being mm -hmm. back to. Yeah. Full hours, I won't say what they are because I don't know, but I think it was like eight to three or whatever. So that was $15,484. Career incentives, again, for a collective bargaining agreement, that was for $300 increase. Screening and grinding was a contract that had come in, and we needed to put $13,500 more on that line. And then the last adjustment was the health insurance at the library for an increase of 5427 So the whole budget that was if the board wants to approve, um, would be for 28,000, or 28 million, not thousand, 28 million, 355,685 dollars. The default budget would be 28 million, 360,531. Yeah. So we're just yeah. under 5,000 less than the default. Yeah. We're up 2.76% over the 2019 budget. Yeah. So that's where the, budget and the default budget stand as I believe the board would like it to be but that'll be up to you guys depending on what you have to say from all your reviews and stuff it's just kind of a summary sheet just so you can kind of see it all in front of you all the changes mm -hmm. that are being proposed I guess in front of you guys do you need a vote on this Christy I believe we would like a vote vote for the budget the default and then those estimated revenues that I had given Revenues, as everybody, I'll just remind everyone, don't really, they're just basically a marking for now. We get to re, we get to do our revenues over and over again, all the way up until right when we set the tax rate. So, which is a great benefit to the taxpayer that, you know, we can have up until like the 11th hour to go over revenues. But right now, the revenue budget in front of you that I'm proposing is for 8,346, no, Eight million three hundred forty-six thousand and seventy-five dollars. Um, so, those are all the things that I have for you guys tonight. I don't know if Fred has anything else or Christy. Eight eight million three forty-six what? Oh, eight seventy-five. Million, yeah, three hundred forty-six thousand and seventy-five dollars. Okay. And those are based on looking back. It's different from what the town managers were because when I built the town manager budget, we hadn't done our estimated revenues for the tax rate for 20. So I readjusted those more in line yeah. with what we expect to have for revenues for the current year. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's where the difference is there. Okay. So are we, we looking for a motion? I, I just have a comment. Before, I mean, I'm ready to make a motion, but Christy, as far as the default budget goes, last year, the default budget there's new regulations as far new as how you have to construct mm -hmm. the default budget. So Christy provided those same worksheets that she provided last year. And it's and if you go through and you can actually see the differences when the numbers don't agree to last year, you can go and you see the explanation I went through and I, mm -hmm. I understand it all. So I am perfectly fine to make a motion for both the operating and the default budget tonight as presented by the finance director. Yeah, now with the new <coughs> default budget law last year, you literally have to, for DRA2, you have to show, you have to point out to the voters and the taxpayers, you have to point out every single line that changed 
and then give the reason as to why. So last mm -hmm. year we had kind of constructed a sheet that puts multiple line items into a certain category, like collective bargaining agreements or whatever. But basically, yeah. so whenever a number is different, like Regina just said, it has to be listed on this additional sheet yeah. so that people can see all of the changes right there for you. You don't have to go looking for them. They're all pointed out right there for you. Yeah. And this all goes to the budget committee as well, correct? Okay. Correct, yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. part of the default now. I just, like, I okay, have the perfect. summary sheets for, like, the first five pages or whatever, and mm -hmm. then there's, like, two pages of explanations as mm -hmm. to all the lines that change. So Regina's made a motion. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, Thank so you, I will Christy. get all those budgets together and off to the budget committee this week. Good. Good. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we have the town manager's report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, work continues on the replacement of the uh, Mill Road water main. Please use alternate routes for your travels, if at all possible. Expect long delays when traffic is heavy and be watchful of employees and equipment on the roadway. Uh, Public Works notified me today that probably in tomorrow or the next day, uh, they're getting close to where they're, they're working from both ends of the system. Okay. Uh, they're getting close to the point where they're going to close down Mill Road from, um, well, from, what she say? From the four-way intersection yeah. north to the yeah. town line. Yeah, good. So, uh, so they can do the swing. They're going to have to swing various uh, yeah. pieces of equipment around on the roadway and work there for several hours. It's only going to be closed for three or four hours, but please be conscious that that may happen either tomorrow or, t or the next day. Hmm. Uh, and that may happen either in the morning and afternoon. We just don't know. It depends yeah. upon the schedule of how they're working. That's good. The Recreation Department reports that Kids Kingdom is nearly completed thanks to the help of many of our citizens and employees and the crew of the USS Virginia. <laughs> Department of Public Works will begin leaf collection on November 18th. Leaves should be in biodegradable bags or barrels without branches or parts of trees or wood. Yeah. That's it, sir. Okay. Ne uh, Questions for the town manager's report? Nope. Anyone? Any questions nope. with the report? Okay, next we move on to old business, the rail trail agreement. Good. Um, are you going to join us, Mark? Sure. Uh, Mrs. Wolseley? I have a motion. As a result of a comprehensive review of town manager Welch's October 31, 2019 memo, Town Council Gerald's October 25, 2019 memo, and Public Works Director Jacobs' January 25, 19 memo, related to the risks and financial commitments imposed on this community, I move that we, as a sitting board, refuse to sign the proposed rail trail agreement due to the unacceptable legal and financial risks to our community. Is there a second? Regina. I'll second for discussion, but I have my own set of questions. Um, okay, we have a first and a second. Um, and uh, for discussion, I would like to say that I am in favor of the rail trail agreement, and I'd like to see this happen. I think it's something that is necessary, even if there is a uh, little bit of uh, some excess spending. I'm looking forward to seeing um, committees form that will help do some of the work. There's a lot of people out there that uh, seem to be committed to uh, getting a volunteer program. Yeah. And uh, I think the time has come. Just last night I watched on TV where they're uh, actually taking part of the roadway all over downtown Boston and doing a, uh, uh, you know, expanding the rail, the, tra the bicycle trails uh, paths by, I believe they said 60 miles. And um, I know that everywhere, including everything that the state wants to do down the beach for Ocean Boulevard, they want to have bicycle paths. I think bicycle paths are here. I myself, uh, uh, where I am um, 
investing in property in Florida. They have 125 miles in one town of bicycle paths. And I would consider riding a bike there. I would never consider riding a bike around Hampton. And I don't think that people that have their children, I wouldn't want my children riding a bike in Hampton. And I think to have something uh, like this that's safe, I think is long overdue. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, I think we should, we should, we, we signed off on this agreement in January. And there's been change in language on one section. And I think we should contain ourselves to that one section only. Mm -hmm. Our and discussion, because we, we've already voted on the other and it passed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you got one section and we deal with one section and that's it. And we yeah. presented concerns to them when we agreed mm -hmm. to vote on that. Did we hear back on all those concerns? Okay. Any, no. uh, did you have anything to say? Oh, yeah, I got a few things. Okay, to say. then please say. On, well, Mary Louise already brought the two memos up, but. Three memos. Three memos. Well, one, I'm going to talk about one. On January 25th, 2019, the Hampton Department of Public Works Director and Deputy Director emailed the Hampton Town Manager, Assistant Town Manager, and the Board of Selectmen a five-page memo outlining Department Rail Trail comments. On January 28, 2019, Hampton Board of Selectmen Chairman Bridal sent a letter to Commissioner Shaheen stating certain concerns that the Board of Selectmen had in regards to the trail. Have these, have these items been addressed in some way? So I did receive a memo that had gotten back to, I think it was forwarded from Jen Hale, received in March saying that everything will be worked out pretty much. Mm -hmm. It was a political answer. And uh, so I guess that's my question. Has a five-page public works memo dated January 25th been responded to by DOT? So I asked that of some constituent supporters of the rail trail, and I also asked that from the town manager. I got a response from the town manager. He forwarded the memo from Director Hale this morning to me. For my other question, after the project is completed, who will be responsible for ongoing maintenance? Will the town of Hampton also be responsible for the Exeter Railroad Bridge? Because per section two of the agreement, it says the town of Hampton is responsible for the management, operation, law enforcement, routine maintenance of existing and new drainage, culverts, ditches, walls, crossing bridges, and other structures that are integral integral for the long-term preservation of the rail trail. Great project. I think it's awesome. I would love to have a bike trail. I would love to have people be able to walk to the downtown and go to the businesses. Terrible. I've been on them. I've been on the one in Stowe. I've been on them in a lot of places. But I just don't understand why it's going to be another thing that gets pawned off on us. Right. Um, I got an answer on that question from the town manager. For that portion located in Hampton, the town public works department will be responsible for maintenance. If there are private parties who volunteer to help, they will be partly responsible to some degree. The Exeter Road Railroad Bridge will be the town's responsibility as it is on a compact roadway, not a state-maintained highway. Removal of the bridge would be very expensive. It would be close to the roadway to traffic for many months. The bridge would have to be replaced with something of a bridging nature, perhaps a railroad cover that would lower the upgrade crossing point but improve sight distances on both sides of the bridging system. Now my main question is because we are in the middle of budget season, warrant article season, is is this in the best interest of the town of Hampton taxpayer? Because that's who I represent. The Public Works Department back in September prepared a memorandum to the Board of Selectmen, future challenges for the Public Works Department, outlining approximately 114.5 million of infrastructure projects that have been pushed off in the town of Hampton. For whatever reason, they've been pushed off and we're re needing to deal with them now. Because of our audited 1231 financials, our total infrastructure has depreciated by 72%. I would argue that the town of Hampton taxpayers would prefer to see the fantastic efforts of our public works department go to our own infrastructure projects and maintenance at this time. That's my comments, that's all I have. Yeah. And I would argue that we all represent all the taxpayers of Hampton. Mr. Waddell? I'm in support of this. I think we voted on it before. I think that there have been private groups. There's a, there's a 5013C, whatever it is, that has offered to help with the, uh, with the, with the maintenance of the trail. I sat in on a meeting with a, with a very large business, local business, who was willing with the naming rights to put a substantial amount of money into maintenance and into uh, maintaining the trail. So I don't think it's going to be a burden on the taxpayer. 
and I think we would be the only, every other town in the area has sound, signed off on it. It's going from Maine to Florida, and I think, I think, I don't, I think it would be disastrous if Hampton does not sign off on it. Rusty? Does not, yeah, agree with it. I, I agree. I think we've, uh, you know, the rail trail's there. And as far as the bridge on Exeter Road, if we don't do anything with it, and the state doesn't, is not going to do anything about it, it's never going to get fixed. So uh, being part of the compact road is going to be part of our responsibility anyways. So I don't, I don't see how that changes this point now. Um, you know, I, I've said all along we could put a smaller culvert there, lower that bridge. And we talked about that when we just talked about doing Exeter Road. And, and doing the infrastructure <coughs> on Exeter Road. And that's going to be something that's going to come up at some point. But I believe the state just not too long ago put some money into that bridge to... to 2005. Yeah, so 10 years, 10, 15 years ago, they put some money in that bridge to, <coughs> to redo it. So um, I don't believe you're going to see anything else out of the state, no matter what happens hey, with nice that rail trail or not. Yeah. I, uh, are you finished? No, I just, uh, I think it's uh, time. I think it's great for our citizens. I think it gives us a great uh, alternative to trying to ride a bike up uh, Lafayette Road. Uh, I think, uh, again, like I had said before, I talked to a gentleman that had come over, oh, last winter, and he'd come over on his bike. He'd come over from Newburyport because he heard there was going to possibly be a rail trail here, so he wanted to go ride it himself. He had mm -hmm. a... a uh, uh, cross-country dirt bike type of bicycle and, and rode it on it, and he was so excited. That's an opportunity to bring people into our area. It's an opportunity for, for families to get a place to ride a bike, a long area, without having to go to some of these other rail trails. I know Derry has one. I know there's others around. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, you know, we've talked about this a number of years, and I think it's time we, we, we move forward with it. Yeah, and I feel that one of the key factors here is the fact that the other towns um, are uh, being supportive. Why would we be the only one that isn't? Um, and uh, I would also, this doesn't have that much to do with it, but I just want to point this out that I don't know how many years ago it was, but there was, they were working on the scenic highway, I believe it was scenic highway grants that uh, wanted to pay for a bicycle uh, path to go down. The part that was, seemed to create the most issues was down Winnicunnet Road and many people did not want the bicycle path to go in front of their houses for one reason or another and it, a lot of people came in and discussed it and um, I want to point out that this is a, a, a rail trail that doesn't go in front of people's houses where they might back up and run into somebody. They don't have to be concerned with that even though we would have gotten a lot of money um, at that time from, uh, I believe, the state or the federal government, whatever. Uh, I think that, you know, it also would be interesting to see where we were the only t town or one of the few towns that didn't go along with that. Did that really hold up that program? I don't no, really know. No, it didn't. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things to look at here, but I'm definitely in favor. We have a first, we have a second. All those in well, favor? Uh, 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 uh. Well, Mrs. Wolseley. Wait a minute here. Have, have each of you read Mr. Welch's October 31, 2019 memo? Have you read Attorney Gerald's 1025-19 memo? And how about Mr. Jacob's memo of 125-19? We no, have, we haven't read any of them. That's a foolish question. We have information from a gentleman who's a friend. Uh, I don't have any friends, not a lot. <laughs> uh, and this actually, I was, I was uh, raised in North Chelmsford, but this gentleman who lives in town was kind enough to share with us uh, his uh, perceptions of what's happened down in Massachusetts. Since its inception from Acton, Mass, through Westford to Chelmsford, then into Lowell, they still really having tremendous issues with, with pedestrian safety at road crossings. This is a rail trail completely asphalt covered. Ours is supposedly going to be stone dust. Stone dust is dangerous. 
It washes away, is susceptible to becoming ruts and holes from heavy rain, will certainly cause injuries from sprained or broken ankles, washouts, bad scrapes from slips or falls. Public emergency response accessibility, the state isn't going to purchase the necessary emergency response vehicles capable of responding or transporting injured users. The towns were saddled with those costs. Crime, not just the former B&M corridor, Lowell to Acton. The corridor through Arlington, Lexington, over 95 and 128, beyond Hanscom Air Force Base, have had many muggings, robberies, and sexual assaults. The victims' cell phones stolen, losing any means of reporting the crimes committed punctually, leaving law enforcement completely unaware of immediate assistance to sometimes hours of not knowing of a crime. I'm not going against the dreams or wishes of people being excited and overjoyed at having this new recreational opportunity. My knowing there have been homes broken into in that backyard, in backyards about that abut the trails. Many injuries upon three trails I'm aware of, the last being in the Cape Cod bike trail. That trail having dead spots also for cell phone service. The Massachusetts trails are paved. Of course, we have the we don't care how Massachusetts does things, naysayers. Our trail will have many more longer sections due to the marshes. Accessibility around the nuclear plants, strictly secured perimeter. These projects always are exciting on paper. People are always excited, new recreational opportunities, which I'm always in favor of, but safety, not just public safety. We're responsible for making sure our professional firefighters and professional police officers have the full necessary safety vehicles and equipment immediately available. The Massachusetts trails are all contained between sides by wooden guardrails. Our trail, from what I understand, will not be. Therefore, if a user unfortunately slips or is knocked into the water areas surrounding the trail, water rescue gear, cold water rescue suits are required, no boat access. I know from many of the firefighters they deal with many broken bones, fractures, head injuries. The, our town's responsibilities are very expensive, time consuming as for time spent out by first responders if emergencies unfortunately occur again. This is only from my knowledge, shared from my knowing local police professional officers, and of course my professional firefighter son and his firefighters first responders. The three memos that I, that I read off to you, Mr. Welch's 1031-19, if you have read it, Town Council Gerald's 1025-19 memo, and Chris Jacobs' 125-19 memo all warn us that we will be on our own for every expense on this trail, and it will cost the taxpayers a fortune. This is a terrible risk to this town. All those in favor <laughs> of, of uh, the, 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 the motion is to not do it. Yes. So yes. that's what I'm saying. Oh. My motion is to not do it, and I hope we have at least one more vote, so gentlemen. All those in favor this for is a her, terrible, please, Mrs. Wolves. This is a terrible risk to this community. That, terrible risk. And you're the ones who will be blamed for it. All those in favor. You're the ones who will be blamed for it. I'm in favor. I'm abstaining from all, any, all okay, this Okay, so we have one in favor. Well, that doesn't. And all well, those it's against. It's not going to get anywhere anyway. Rest, there's well, three against, no one abstention. Yeah. I make and a motion that we sign the agreement as with the modified section four. Shame on you. I'll second. All those in favor? Three. Abstain. Abstaining. And are you against Mrs. Wolseley? Shame on you. A terrible disservice to this town. We don't make comments on how you vote. Don't make comments on how we vote. Yeah. So, and that. It's on your heads. Any, you have something to say, Fred? No, nope. your vote is your vote, and that's yeah. what should happen when you need to vote. Next, we have any other old business? 
I guess I should say, Mr. Chairman, this is going to represent 16 new forms of revenue to the town because there are 16 separate items on the rail trail well, that are going to be taxable to for real estate Read purposes the by the thing. town. There you go. Very nice. Yeah. How Very much? Nice. Don't know yet. And offset our expense. Any thank you for coming though. in tonight. The people that were here, the paying, wanted to pay it. Be part thank of this much. discussion. Thank you. Um, next, we have new business. Any new business? Mary Louise, we saw the meeting going on. Uh, any new business? Seeing none, we move to closing comments. Good meeting. Any closing comments? Motion to adjourn at 20:50. Um, I, I want to ask the chair a unanimous. You're not. Are you, you going to be scheduling a meeting for every Monday? We only have six Mondays now be to, for the end I of the year. I think they already have been scheduled. The meetings we're going to have. We